On the build show today, we're talking roof framing. My team just completed framing this roof with roof trusses, but if you watch me build my house, I built with stick framing or traditional rafters. So in the build show today, we're gonna count down the pros and cons between rafters that are traditionally built versus trusses, and we're gonna talk about the cost comparison as well. Today's build show all about roof framing. Let's get going. All right, guys, I'm back with Ray from Builders First Source, my trust guy. Ray, what is the number one reason why builders have moved, national builders, most houses in America, have moved from a traditional hand-cut roof to a truss roof like this? So uh, the number one reason is speed, really. They are getting the packages and throwing up, uh, putting them up there on the roofs, on the wall panel packages relatively quickly, within a day or two, compared to a hand-cut package, which may depending on the complexity may take a week or so. Yeah, and that's definitely my experience. You know, when I built my house, I did a traditional hand cut roof, very simple roof design, uh, no dormers, no uh, pitch changes, things like that. And it took a solid week uh, for the hand cut and sheathing. Whereas this house we're in here, fairly complicated roof design. We got a dormer on the back. Uh, we've got a lot of things happening here. And yet we basically built this roof in a day and a half or so, you know, very, very quick. Now, is it a less costly roof though? Uh, would you say compared to a hand cut roof to go to a truss? Uh, depending on the complexity of the roof, depending on if we've got a real straight run of trusses uh, or, or rafters, et cetera, uh, they usually do have an additional cost to them. Of course, with the labor in the shop to assemble them together. Where we really find the cost savings is the time to get the install and the ease of use as far as the trusses are concerned, right? We're gonna have a, little, a lot more consistency. They're built in a factory and, and we'll have straighter lines, straighter fascia lines, straighter runs, and that will keep your your repairs, your costs down as far as how long you're on the job site. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's interesting to think about though, if you looked at just the lumber package, you know, dropping off the two by tens and the ridge beams, it actually might be less expensive just on the materials for a hand cut roof compared to a truss roof like this. But the massive savings is labor. And of course, labor is a huge cost in building a house. Uh, and you can see that in the time difference between how long it took to build my house versus this house. Talk to me about pitch changes, about dormers, things like that. Um, what does that do to you as a truss designer, as a manufacturer for those things? Relatively easy to accomplish as far as trusses go. Most uh, pitch breaks, uh, cathedral ceilings, tray ceilings, those are all included uh, per the design in the actual truss. Uh, we've, where we may have some, uh, some cutouts for ceiling lights, uh, mm -hmm. skylights, etc. Those are all as, uh, designed in at the beginning and part of the truss packages and the individual trusses themselves. Yeah, and you so, can see that on this house big time. We've got all kinds of that going on. We've got a, a tall ceiling here with a girder truss coming across. And you and I are standing in a pretty big space. What would you call this space in the trusses? Um, this could be a HVAC platform or a storage area for Christmas decorations, books, etc., whatever the customer's looking for. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And as I look at this truss we're standing on compared to the other trusses, these just have a two by four bottom cord where we have some type of doubled up cord. Can you kind of explain to me what's happening? Here? Yes, sir. So we'll add the additional weight into the design and depending on the complexity, how much weight we're looking at trying to, to hold up and keep, of course, all of our deflection uniform throughout. So we have straight ceiling lines mm -hmm. and straight sheetrock lines. Uh, we'll uh, adjust the material and the grade of the material to make that truss trust function as a part of the system. Yeah, that makes sense. So two by four cords here, two by six cords here, and also not a very big span. So that enables us to put an HVAC unit right here, maybe still have some storage for a Christmas tree or that sort of thing up in this space. Now we could have accommodated this in other parts of the attic too, had we designed for that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but when I come up here and I see a bunch of verticals in the way, that's where me as the old school builder goes, oh, you know, I wish that we could have done a hand cut roof. But let's talk about the actual cost and where the rubber meets the road. Uh, you and I did a little, uh, a little cost comparison of what this roof would have been hand cut versus what we were with trusses. What do you think the material and labor savings was on this project? We figured about seven 
thousand dollars as far as the difference is concerned. Obviously what we're going to pick up, we're going to lose as far as the trusses and the conventional frame is, is concerned. We're going to pick up, like I said, in the ease of use and the waste. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no waste on this. Zero got thrown into the dumpster. Everything got put up. Now, two things I did want to mention. We did have to get a SkyTrack out here to set these trusses. We just used a SkyTrack for one day. No crane necessary. They're not super heavy, but we did have a pretty tall two-story section. Um, but we also had to accommodate lead time because trusses aren't available for a next day delivery like a two by 10 might be. Talk to me about lead time and what people should expect. Yes, sir. Uh, most of the time, I would tell you that uh, the lead time for truss packages, a floor and roof truss package, will be one to two weeks. Uh, it, when we're extremely busy, like we have been in this, in this market for the last couple of, the last year or so, it could be up to a month, yeah. just depending on commodities, ease of, of, of uh, operation, what we have in stock, et cetera, so supply lines. So one to two weeks to a month, not terrible. I mean, I always have some amount of time with my foundation crew, getting groundworks in, all that kind of stuff. Just, you, you're not ordering that the day before the framer start or no, the week sir. before the framer start. You need to give a little bit of lead time. Talk to me about lumber. What is the typical lumber that you're seeing for trusses in the south versus uh, maybe other parts of the country? In the south, we're using a, a yellow pine, different grades uh, of yellow pine between uh, visually graded yellow pine, number three, number two, number one. We have some machine stress rated 1650, 2400 MSR. We use two by six and two by eight grades. Um, generally in other locations around the, in regions around the country, you'll see some SPF material, spruce pine fir mix. Uh, and then in some other locations, you'll see dug fir, green dug fir, etc. just depending on the area that you're, that you're building houses. I built a lot of yellow pine. I really, I really like yellow pine. It is a dense, strong wood, uh, and it's made for some really stiff and nice trusses. And I think something that we didn't mention necessarily, uh, is the benefit of trusses and roof trusses is your crew doesn't have to be quite as experienced uh, when it comes to the framers on the job site. Uh, hand cut roofs are not something you learn uh, typically in the first few years of your frame carpentry experience. So you need some uh, men and women on the job that have some experience with hand cutting, with understanding reading plans, especially as you get to a more uh, complicated roof, adding dormers, adding pitch changes, all those things that make that roof a little more difficult. Whereas with trusses, you guys can even do domes. You can do all kinds of things on trusses and the carpenter needs to know the layout, but all that pitch change, all that whatever is already accommodated in the truss and they're just setting them on whatever centers we need, right? Yes, sir, 100%. Yeah, there's definitely a benefit to that, especially as we uh, have so many craftsmen in America that are, that are aging out and retiring and we're trying to get that next generation out there. So uh, certainly no uh, disrespect to the traditional and the hand cut. I still love those. Uh, I still try to use them wherever I can because I get that much more space out of this. But there's something to be said about that cost savings. I mean, 7,000 bucks in a house like this, uh, you know, if lumber prices go up, that could easily go up to 10,000 bucks or framing costs go up. So this is real money saved by going with roof trusses on this house. One final thing I want to ask about, uh, you know, I've had a lot of firefighters over the years comment uh, about these connections, you know, these metal uh, connectors. This is a MyTech product that's, that's a, uh, a pressed on product, right? Yes, sir. Uh, talk to me about fire rating, how these are going to work structurally in wind loads and storm events and fire, things like that. Um, so we are not in a the coastal zone in, mm -hmm. in Austin here today. So the wind load is, is um, pretty low. Pretty low. Yeah, and we don't yes. have no snow load here. No, either. no snow. So we're relatively, as far as loading is concerned in this area, we don't have any of the heavy snow loading that they do up north right. or, or the coastal area wind loads. Sure. Um, these are not fire treated mm -hmm. pieces of material, yep. but as far as the plates and everything else is concerned, I think these, these are steel, stainless steel um, and the, the uh, fire that we would be worried about, say an, an individual piece of wood starts to, to catch on fire and burn. Obviously, as, as we said with the floor trusses, these roof trusses are intentioned to be uh, a set. They, are, they a function system. as a system, thank you very much, yeah. as a unit. And so when one starts to fail, the others pick up the slack and they are engineered that way. Yeah, and it's funny you said that. I saw a picture on Instagram not too long ago of a production builder house that was in framing, no sheathing on it, wasn't braced well. The house 
tipped over. I'm sure a wind event happened or something. The roof was totally intact. The roof trusses, the decking that was on there, no, looked like it was a roof sitting on a foundation, but yet the sticks were all turned over. And I think that kind of speaks to the engineering behind this. Uh, and you mentioned that coastal or high wind load. You can engineer for that. We just didn't do that on this house, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can. All right, Anything so that we can decide to add into that, say we have pool tables, water beds, clay tile ceiling, uh, uh, roof tiles that are going to be put on, all that we need, to, we need to adjust for that and make sure so that we can keep a long-lasting uniform roof line. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. And back to the fire thing, just to address that for any of my firefighters in the audience, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I know you put your lives on the line for us every day, uh, and certainly there is uh, potentially some additional loss of strength in a fire, um, but new houses certainly burn less than old houses. And once the occupants are out, what I hear from my firefighter friends out there is that the firefighter team is not as worried about saving the structure as they are about saving lives, as it should be. Uh, so I'm not super worried about that concern in particular, uh, but if that is a concern of yours, Think about a traditional two by framed roof if fire is your is your number one concern or go to an ICF or a concrete roof, right? Because concrete is more fireproof than wood in general. The last thing I do want to mention, though, I have to say this as a, a lifetime remodeler. If I'm going to add a second story or a dormer to a house that have that has trusses, I'm a little worried about that. And there's going to be a lot more effort to change the roof line to remodel later. So if you're building a house that you think is going to get a change to it, you might consider going hand cut compared to these. Because anytime I cut a member here, I've reduced the structure, I've changed the loading. Uh, we can't do that very easily. Uh, not that you can easily on a traditional framed house either. But there is something to be said about all those houses framed in the 1920s through 1960s that had hand cut roofs that we could modify and do something with. On the other hand though, 7,000 bucks on a 3,000 square foot living space house, that's real money. I mean, that's an extra island in the kitchen. That's nicer countertops. That's a nicer appliance package. That's hardwoods in a few bedrooms. That's real money to be saved. Ray, I really appreciate your time, man. Yes, sir, my pleasure. Guys, if you're not currently a Builder's First Source customer, I've been using them since about 2000. Uh, so over 20 years now, great people. They have like 500 locations around the U.S. There's a Ray in your town who can help you design or move from traditional to roof trusses if you're interested in making that change. They're really good people. Highly recommend them. They're one of my big sponsors. I'll put a link to them in the description below. And if you're new to the channel here, guys, we talk about all kinds of things here on The Build Show. We talk about framing and roofing and products and sheathing and air tightness and building science and all kinds of stuff. I'd love to have you hit that subscribe button. You know, we're really close to getting a million subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And by the way, we publish every Tuesday and every Friday here on YouTube. We also publish the same times on buildshownetwork.com. And if you haven't seen my website, I have 12 other builders and an architect shooting videos on their job site. We literally publish 12 new videos a week over there on all kinds of topics on how to build and design a better house. Hit the button below to subscribe to our newsletter so that twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, you'll get an email from my team saying, here's what's new on the website. With that being said, follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.